In this video, we're going to take a look at the curve modifier. The curve modifier is great for doing stuff like this. I started out with just a long rectangular box object. And then you can see here that I can make my object follow a curve that I draw that is attached to the curve modifier. So pretty good. You can adjust the curve. And as you adjust the curve, I'll just adjust the curve here quickly. As you adjust the curve, you adjust the bend of your object. This is a little different than the simple to form bending modifier because it bends very uniform. This one, you get to control the exact bending of your object. So let's uh, give it a go. Let's go File New. And here we go. What we have here is I have my cube. I'm going to do a little scale down. And I'm going to scale in the X. I'll scale in the X again. There we go. And there's my object. Now, one thing I want to do with my object is I need to give it a bit more of a mesh, right? A lot of these modifiers that bend your object, you need a lot of edges and vertices in there so it has something to bend around. Right now, this is just sort of two couple straight edges. So let's go to the loop modifier. Let's go loop, cut, and slide. Roll the mouse. That's pretty good. Click, click. Done. Now, while I'm also in here, one thing I'm going to do is I'm actually going to reset the origin of my cube to be right at the end. Okay, and you'll see why in a second. So let's go face select, mesh, snap, cursor to the selected. Perfect. Let's go to object mode. And now let's say right away, transform origin to the 3D cursor. There we go. That's now considered the end of my object. Now, if I hit Alt-G now, this point should go to the center of the world. So Alt-G. Perfect. It's ready to go. Now, I'm going to be working on this curve, so I'm actually just going to, let's just move this to the side of it. Now what I need is I need to get a curve here that does some sort of curve that I want my object to follow. So let's go for it. Let's go add curve bezier. There it is. Let's get it pretty close to the center of the world there. Let's go into edit mode and let's build the curve up. So I'm not going to do anything too complicated here. Actually, let me make sure I'm in top down view is actually much better for this, right? So the curve stays nice and flat on the ground. So seven and let's do another extrude. Let's, let's say that's good. I've sort of messed up here. My computer's having a bit of a, a fit. There we go. Ah. One more extrude. There we go. So there's my curve. Now, what I'd also like to do is get the center of the curve, or the origin of the curve, right there. So same procedure. I'm going to take the very first point. I'm going to go curve. Snap, cursor to selected. And then let's go into object mode. And right away, object transform, origin to the cursor. And so it starts there as well. I'm going to Alt-G both of them, right, to reset their position. So Alt-G, the curve moves right there. I go to my box thing, Alt-G. It goes right there. Now let's see if it's going to follow the curve. Okay, select the box. Take the modifier. Let's add the curve. And when it wants the curve, say object, Bezier curve. And if you've done it right, from the starting origin of the object, should line up with the origin of the curve. Okay, and that's why we reset the origins to the very beginning of each object. So it lines up nicely. Now, if it didn't line up nicely, you can drag it and move it. So we could have technically skipped that step. But you'll see how it works. As long as there's a curve to follow, that part of the mesh over it follows the curve. The parts that go over just continue in the last direction known, you know, so it straightens out again. So I didn't make my curve quite long enough, but, you know, I could always go back go into edit mode, take the curve, extrude, right?
and there we go. So now it actually is a bit better, and it follows the whole way. Whoops, wrong object. Okay, so there you go. And that's how you bend objects. Uh, one cautious note here when you do do this is that notice the direction I did. The deformation axis X. I lined up my object along the X. I made my curve sort of follow in the direction of the X. But of course I went off of the X axis a bit. And that's why it's this deformation axis X. If you click different ones, it'll attempt to bend off of different axes. Uh, one of them is going to be the one that works for you. But if you follow this procedure, line your object up along the X, choose X, make your curve go along from a top view, you know, wiggling and bending around the X, and this should work out okay. And that's it. Nice little uh, way to bend your objects.